I'm here with Rabbi Lawrence Kushner, a world-renowned author and thinker on many issues, but primarily Jewish spiritual life. And I want to ask you, uh, it's such a wonderful opportunity, what, what first introduced you to Kabbalah, Jewish spirituality, Hasidut, Hasidic thinking, and, and what has that meant for your life? Wow. <laughs> When, when I wrote my first book, the, the Book of Letters, a mystical Hebrew alphabet, mm -hmm. which we titled Sefer Otiyot, and Harper and Merle published it, uh, you could have, this was, must have been in 1974 or somewhere in there. Shmuley, you could have counted the number of books that had the word spirit spiritual, mystical, or Kabbalah uh -huh. on the bookshelf uh -huh. on one hand. Right. Nothing existed. Mm -hmm. And as we were talking about earlier, I just had this sense that there must be something more, although nobody was telling us about it mm -hmm. then. I mean, partly it was because of the Shoah, and all of our teachers who would have been great teachers then, or most of them had perished. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to invent my own rebbies. Mm -hmm. I had to go looking for them. Nobody would talk about them. Mm -hmm. um, and the other, the other thing is, is that it's always seemed to me as uh, uh, Moshe Edel, the great historian of Kabbalah, has really said, whatever it is that makes religion religion, mm -hmm. mysticism has more of it. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wanted to find out what it was that made religion religion, and that led me, no matter how, how often I tried to go in a different direction, always led me right back to Kabbalah and the spiritual. And where are we today in, in this? I mean, I, I, has it become that much more pervasive, that there's a fluency and literacy in this? I, it, it, it's an interesting question. I, I, I think that the spirituality wave has already crested. Uh -huh. It's now spirituality ho-hum. Mm -hmm. And what seems to have taken its place, and I, I say this non-judgmentally good or bad mm -hmm. uh, is meditation. Uh -huh. And that uh, <clears throat> a, a lot of the people who are drawn to spirit, who would have been drawn to spirituality, now seem to be gathering around meditation. Mm -hmm. And there's a flurry of activity as Jews are trying to figure out how to Judaize it also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in your, in your um, book, God was in this place and I did not know, Finding self, spirituality, and ultimate meaning, which I love, by the way. Um, one of the questions that kept coming up for me was, what's this relationship between who am I and who is God? What's the relationship between this psychological question of self-awareness and this theological question of the, the grander cosmos? Sure. Um, Alexander Altman, Allah Shalom, mm -hmm. taught... Uh, Jewish history mysticism at Brandeis in an essay a long time ago, it still is in my head. He said, God is the self, but the self is not God. Mm -hmm. That somehow we find God in losing ourselves. And that any attempt to find mm -hmm. God while you still have yourself is doomed to failure. Mm -hmm. I guess that makes me a mystic too. What I have to do is I have to be willing to dissolve myself in order to realize who and God, who I and God have been all along. Mm -hmm. Or to put it in even another way, the trick is to get rid of your I. Mm -hmm. You, I didn't correct you, but you misread the title uh, of the book when you just cited uh, it. God was in this place and I, comma, I did not know. Uh -huh. I is, saw that, I thought it was my right, own spelling error. Right, yeah. it's, a, it's, a <laughs> it's a very literal translation uh -huh. of the Genesis... Uh, it was 2816 where Jacob's, I know, Yesha, let's see, I don't know about my ever, I know he, lo yadati, and I, I did not know. And that I play with that in the book. The big eye is the divine eye, and the little lowercase eye yeah. is the, the ego of you and me, and the bumper sticker should be for us. It's your ego, stupid. So, 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 so how attainable is that? Meaning, do you have to be a person who moves to seclusion, move to religious immersion? Can someone working in insurance or medicine or, or whatever the thing, whatever it is, I mean, really reach a level of becoming relatively selfless? Sure. Well, let me let me tell you a, a quick, quick story. Yeah. Uh, when my wife Karen was pregnant with our second uh, 
second child. We were living in a little shoebox of an apartment in Marlboro, Massachusetts, and she was like in her sixth month or so. And it was snowing, and we had gone to bed, and around 11.30, she wakes me up. She says, Larry, I said, what is it? What is it? You okay? She says, yeah, but I, I can't sleep. I said, why? She said, I, I got this. I, I, it, it ch ch chocolate bar went on. Well, of course, I realized this is the strange craving of a pregnant woman, and I got my snow park on with the hood and the goggles and the gloves and the galoshes. Don't worry about a thing, honey. I'll get you. And I run down. It's been snowing. I clean off that kind of thing. Where the hell am I going to find that chocolate bar? <laughs> Midnight marble. Uh, but I'm a man on a mission. You know, uh -huh. I'm driving. And I remember the holiday and out on 495 has a candy machine. And I figure the night clerk sees this bizarre scene, mm -hmm. man in pajamas, runs into out of a blizzard, punches all his toll quarters, grabs the candy bars, waves, drives off into the blizzard. And the baby's fine. He lives in Berkeley now. <laughs> as well. But the reason I tell the story, yeah. for about 45 minutes, I, Lawrence Kushner, who normally have a very well-developed ego, thank you very much, <laughs> I don't have an ego. I'm not doing what I want to do which is stay in a warm bed. What am I doing? I'm driving here looking for candy bars in a blizzard. Uh -huh. And here's the crazy part. It makes me happier to do what mm -hmm. my lover wants mm -hmm. than it does for me to do what I want. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes to the very heart of doing its own. Mm -hmm. That I'm doing what my lover wants. What yeah. could be more right. ego-losing, yeah. transformative than that? Yeah. No, I can't do it with everybody. I can't do it with strangers yet, but uh -huh. I'd like to think I'm working my way up. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I often think about pantheism and panentheism. Sure. And pantheism in, in, in a very simplistic sense of God is the world, and panentheism in, a, in also a very simplistic sense of God is the world plus, or is the world and beyond. Sure. How, how, how do you think of panentheism? And is this a relevant theology for people to explore today? Well, I, I think yeah. panentheism, yeah. the way the Hasidim you know, developed it, yeah. is um, a very, very important piece of Jewish thought. Yeah. And I think it could save a whole lot of Jews if they uh -huh. knew it existed. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always tried to explain it to my students as saying there's, there's two ways to understand a relationship to God. Uh, one, uh, God's a big circle up there, and there's a little circle down here, that's you and me. And that because God's up there and we're down here, it's uh, vertical, and therefore it's hierarchical, and therefore it's generically masculine. Welcome to Western thought, Muslim. Um, there's another way to think about our relationship with God. It's only a metaphor. Big circle, it's God. Now watch where the little circle that's you and me goes. We are within the divine all, all the time. The only problem is most of the time we don't know it because our ego is telling us, ah, you're running the show, you're doing this. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I find that when I say that to Jews today, they nod and they smile on a real deep level. They get it. Mm -hmm. And that they, the goal of religion is to help me to realize that that little border around me is not as impermeable or as permanent as I think it is, mm -hmm. and that every time I have a momentary mystical experience, the border around me disappears and I dissolve into the divine, all of it, and then I'm back to being me again. Mm -hmm. and so is, is human autonomy an illusion? Um, yeah. <laughs> and don't ask me to explain. Okay, well, everybody who I regard as right. being, not everybody, but most of the people I've talked about this a lot with, sort of get to the same place, and they all have different mm -hmm. ways of doing mm -hmm. a song and dance out of the problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you've started, or I should say restarted, painting. Yeah. What, is that, what does that mean to you? What are you discovering in that process? Um, I painted a lot as a boy, and for 50 years I let it go to be a rabbi. Yeah. And as I think I just I mentioned earlier, I, about four years ago, I started painting, and I've been doing two serious oil paintings a week mm -hmm. and just having the time of my life. And one of the, or several of the things that I'm discovering is, is that to be an artist, you got to realize the same thing you got to know as a spiritual seeker, and that is there's more to the reality than what you can see. Mm -hmm. 
and that you have to be a very close observer and maintain a sustained gaze and you begin to see more and more. Or uh, to give another example, you can begin to discover that there's no such thing as absolute color. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I had lunch with a member of my former congregation at the Harvard Faculty Club mm -hmm. at the table of applied mathematics. And somebody at the table, one of the faculty members said to another, what time is it? And somebody down the table shouted, where? <laughs> because we, we, if, as an artist, you say, what color is it? I want to say, when? <laughs> when the sun is setting, when there's a bright light on it at night? What, what do you mean when you say color? Color is something that happens between the viewer and the object that's illumined in different ways. And that leads me to think about people. Well, you see a son of a bitch, I want to say, mm -hmm. when? Right. Maybe he's at Sonic now. Well, now you should see him when he's at Sonic. Right. He's a pretty good Sonic, too. So I, I'm not as quick to judge who mm -hmm. people are. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Right, beautiful. So my, my, my last question for you is, what what's next for you? What are some of the other pursuits you'd like to undertake in the coming in the coming years, writing or beyond? Well, I, I have a, I have another novel in mm -hmm. the word processor, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a contemporary three generational American riff on the binding of Isaac's mm -hmm. story, mm -hmm. um, and I want to paint real big paintings. I mean, three, four, five foot paintings, mm -hmm. but, and um, I'm sort of thrilled by the prospect of trying to do that too. Yeah. Um, and I like praying with my daughter, Rabbi mm -hmm. Noah Kushner, right? mm -hmm. one of the, those lucky rabbis who get to say that my kid's my rabbi. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I encourage everyone to check out Rabbi Lawrence Kushner's books on Amazon. They've, uh, they've, they've been profoundly transformational for so many in the Jewish world, seeking something much deeper. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking this thank time. You.